Here's everything Apple announced at WWDC in seven minutes. I have been out in Cupertino for Apple's 2025 Developers Conference, where it shows off its newest software. Let's go over all of the biggest new features. Starting out was Apple's overarching naming scheme for its operating systems. It has moved to the year. Then Apple moved on to its new design language liquid glass, inspired by the tactility of Vision OS. Everything has this glass look from icons to buttons. There's a level of transparency where content is visible below the UI elements. It also gives them this sense of being real as they refract light as you move your phone. This design language is expansive, showing up across all of Apple's platforms. Moving to iOS 26, there's a new lock screen. Text like the time can dynamically update to your images, adjusting the size and weight of the font to fill the space. On the home screen, you will see all of Apple's new icons that look great in light and dark mode. Plus, there's a clear version that users can opt for. I'm sure many of you will be overjoyed that the Photos app has reverted, now going back to a tabbed interface for your collections and the library. The phone app has a new call screening feature. When a call comes in that you don't know, it will answer in the background and only ring you once the person on the other side says who is calling, which is then shown on your lock screen so you know whether or not to answer. I also love this new hold assist feature where it will put a call that is in hold into the background and then it'll alert you when someone is back on the line. CarPlay has new widgets, there are live activities and tapbacks. Plus, again, the same overall redesign with that glassiness and new icons and it's coming to all versions of CarPlay and not just CarPlay Ultra. Messages gets custom backgrounds, typing indicators in group chats, polls, and Apple Pay support in groups. Wallet can show you all your orders that it finds inside of the mail app, and you can add a digital ID with just your passport for travel. There's a whole new games app as well as a new preview app. Image Playgrounds can now generate images with ChatGPT, including additional styles. And then we have the new live translation, which works across phone and messages and will help improve communication across languages. Moving to macOS, it is indeed called Tahoe. We have new icon customization, including the ability to tint them or turn them clear. macOS gets several new apps, including Journal and the phone app. Live activities are new, showing things like your food delivery right in the menu bar. Spotlight was massively revamped with much more inclusive search and can even include apps that you have on your phone. And Apple has added hundreds of new actions that can be performed in Spotlight, like creating a GIF, adding a reminder, or sending an email. Similarly, shortcuts got overhauled with new AI capabilities that look really cool. More on that soon. And for gaming, there is a new games app and a new game mode that shows tools in an overlay while you are gaming. For Apple Watch, there is a new wrist flick gesture you can use to dismiss things, adding to the existing gestures like double tap. Smart Stack is improving with more relevant information based on time, location, and more. Plus, there are new Smart Stack suggestions to remind you to check Smart Stack when a new option is being presented. In the updated workout app, Apple has a new workout buddy. It'll help encourage you and give you updates on your workout as you go. Finally, the Notes app is coming to Apple Watch. Over on iPadOS, the big news here is the updated window management system. It looks incredible. There is support for many more apps at once. They're easy to resize, and there is even support for expose. Finally, Apple even added a new menu bar at the top for the usual controls. There's a new files app that has an improved list view to make working with files much easier. I'm really hyped for this. There is now background task support for iPadOS. Things like exporting a video can run in the background while you continue to use your iPad. Yeah, 
For content creators, there are local recordings for audio and video while on video calls that can be used for things like interviews or podcasts. I'm really excited to try that out. And iPad gets games, preview, the journal app, and the updated shortcuts. On Vision OS, we are getting widgets in a big way. Not only do they just exist on Vision OS now, but they can be anchored so that their location stays put as you move. And those locations are persistent. Even after you reboot the headset, they will still be there. They could be anchored to a wall or your desk, and they just look so very cool. Personas are now much more accurate, especially when it comes to skin tone, complexion, and hair. Playback for more immersive content is supported in partnership with various brands such as GoPro, like things like 180 and 360 degree video will now be able to play back natively, basically. Sony's PSVR 2 controllers are now supported, which will be great for games. And there's a new Jupiter immersive environment. Even Apple TV's tvOS got an update this time around, including the new glassy liquid glass appearance and a karaoke mode that uses your iPhone as a mic. Lastly, to wrap this up, AirPods are getting updated. AirPods now support automatic handoff to CarPlay. Love it. Pressing the stems can control the camera, helpful for content creators, and they are capable of studio quality recordings. Those are Apple's biggest announcements. Let me know down below in the comments which of these features you are most looking forward to. Of course, stay tuned to the channel though, and I'll give you a deep dive into many, many more of these features. There is so much more to talk about than these high level ones that could even be mentioned in the WWDC keynote. So again, be sure you're subscribed. Let me know your favorites down below and maybe even your misses. And I'll see you guys all in the next video.